Welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and I'm talking about all the best cards from each set for the Commander format. Haven't done this series in a while, and I'm getting back to it. And I'm doing an absolute whopper today. It is Urza's Saga, of course, a famously powerful even broken set as some would probably say this was a tough one for sure going through all these cards finding out which ones are best for the commander format there's just so many really impactful cards from this set i actually played in standard when this set came out and of course it was incredibly impactful for the game famously a lot of the cards got banned almost instantly because there was so many broken busted things going on some of those cards still banned to this day there's just a lot of cards that are really really powerful like show and tell and time spiral that sure they're good in a commander game you don't really see them that much though so maybe I could give them an honorable mention greater good a fantastic sack outlet that didn't quite make my list but certainly a great card in the commander format back to basics a great card for hating on those non-basic lands that didn't quite make my list Argothian Enchantress one of the best Enchantress effects that we have in the format Gilded Drake is from this set right great card for stealing your opponent's creatures used mostly in CEH though Meltdown a fantastic sweeper for artifacts Oppression a really great card if you want to lose friends and a couple of my personal favorites like Thran Turbine and Soul Sculptor also from this set they're kind of fringe though so not good enough to make the list but if you're just looking at all the cards I just mentioned they're all really fantastic and yet didn't make the top 10 list for me it's not just power level here but also how you ubiquitous are they right how many decks can we fit these cards into or how effective they can be in the format so i'm going to start out number 10 is carpet of flowers one green mana enchantment at the beginning of each of your main phases if you haven't added mana with this ability this turn you may add x mana of any one color where x is the number of islands target opponent controls this is a little fringe but it's definitely a card that's been used in the format a ton and there's a lot of people that will just put this in all their green decks because they're always going to be playing against people that have islands and this is just a one mana enchantment that's giving you free mana every turn what's extra good about it is it can happen on each of your main phases so you can play this on your first main phase and then on your second main phase because you haven't added mana yet if you got some opponents with islands you can now get that mana on your second main phase or if you already have it in play you don't want to use it on your first main phase you can wait to your second main phase it's just a really great card to give you free mana even though it is color specific certainly a card that's been played in the format for a long long time coming in at number nine victimize two and a black sorcery choose two target creature cards in your graveyard sacrifice a creature if you do return the chosen cards to the battlefield tapped really really great recursion one of the best i think especially if you're in a theme where you want to be sacrificing creatures which of course there's a ton of those if you have any deck where you're creating tokens just sacrifice a token creature to get two giant busted creatures out of your graveyard really fantastic value there i guess i could give an honor bunch to exhume as well also a great recursion effect in the format again there's so many options here it's hard to choose which ones make the top 10 for me victimize is probably one of the best for this does get played a lot in the commander format because it fits both the recursion theme and the sacrifice theme so i think it fits in a lot more decks coming in at number eight abundance i'm sure we've all seen this card in the commander format before two green green enchantment if you would draw a card you may instead choose land or non-land and reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card of the chosen kind put that card into your hand and put all other cards revealed this way on the bottom of your library in any order again a card that has been reprinted in commander sets it's been used in the format a lot there's a lot of neat things that you can do with this card most obvious way is if you would draw a card and you really really need a land you just choose land and you're just going to reveal cards until you get a land later in a game it's probably where it's at its best because because you probably don't want lands right you want to be drawing gas off the top of your library and this is just an easy way to ensure that you're not going to be getting mana flooded you just avoid the lands and reveal stuff that you can actually probably use later in a game there's also some shenanigans you can get into cultivator colossus of course there's the combo there there's probably a couple other neat combos that you can get into also it is a replacement draw right this is a replacement effect so if you would draw a card you may instead choose land or non-land so this skips your draw which 
can be a good thing. It can actually prevent you from drawing yourself to death if that is an issue because it is replacing the draw that you would normally have. Really is a card that you could put in any commander deck and it's going to be doing lots of work for you. Coming in at number seven, and this really goes to the power level of this set to have a card like Sneak Attack at number seven. Three and a red enchantment. Pay one red. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. That creature gains haste. Sacrifice that creature at the beginning of the next end step. Of course, an incredibly powerful effect. Lots of decks in the history of magic have been built around this card it even just fits in a lot of decks where you're doing similar strategies to this again this is a card that i wasn't really sure where to put on the list a lot of people probably would put it a lot higher i think it is a little fringe you're not going to shoehorn this into any deck it does fit into particular decks it is certainly a card that gets played in the format all the time and it is an absolute smash hit in a lot of strategies that are doing something similar i put it at number seven i think that's a pretty good spot for it coming in at number six pariah yeah, two and a white enchantment aura enchant creature all damage that would be dealt to you is dealt to enchanted creature instead this one i'm sure a lot of people would be shocked i put higher than sneak attack because sneak attack i guess is the more powerful card but pariah is the card that i think you could put in more decks right i'm leaning more towards cards that yes okay they're powerful and they're very usable and they fit on a lot of different decks but the more decks they fit into and the more needed they are in the format i guess you could say for me that bumps them up the list and pariah Pariah is doing something that not really a lot of other cards are doing and probably could get played a lot more than people think because there's a lot of different ways to use this card. First of all, it's a great way to redirect damage to your commander if you want to, right? There's commanders out there that actually want damage dealt to them. Also, it's a fantastic fit in any deck where you have a commander that doesn't really take damage. So for example, an indestructible commander. If you have an indestructible commander in white, there are a few. Throw this on your commander and any damage that would be dealt to you is dealt to your commander which of course doesn't do anything there's some really neat combos again and shenanigans that you can get into but also you can put this on your opponent's creature right this essentially can be removal or a politics theme a little bit where you can put this on your opponent's creature and then if you take damage their creature is going to take damage which then will probably kill it it's going to prevent them from wanting to attack you it really is a neat card that has a lot of versatile ways to use it and probably should see more play in the format i think Coming in at number five, Priest of Titania. One in a green, Elf, Druid, 1-1. One, one. Tap, add a green for each elf on the battlefield. Again, this is sort of a fringe, not really fringe, but specific card that you're going to be wanting to put in specific decks, but it's just one of the best mana dorks ever created. It is absolutely busted in an elf deck, obviously, so it's going to get played a ton for that reason, though even if your commander is just an elf, though, this is pretty good because, of course, it's an elf itself. So if your commander is an elf, you now have two elves in play, and this taps to add two green mana, which for a mana dork is really good. So again, I'm playing into the how many decks can this fit into scenario. There's a ton of elf commanders in the format. A lot of elf tribal decks as well. So it is going to fit in a whole lot of decks. But also, it's one of the most powerful mana dorks ever created. Maybe the most powerful mana dork ever created. So I got to give it a mention on this list. Coming in at number four, Windfall. Two and a blue sorcery. Each player discards their hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. So if we're talking about those cards that got banned way back in the day when this was in standard this was one of them famously it was in that Talorian academy deck and it was one of the cards that got banned to sort of dismantle that deck interestingly enough it is still banned in legacy and restricted in vintage so that sort of gives you an idea of the power level of this card the fact that it is blue to me is why is it so far up this list and why it is used so much in commander it has been reprinted in five commander sets it's used a lot in commander because it is a blue card obviously it has that wheel type of effect right but if you're in red you have a lot of those wheel effects if you're not playing red this is one of the only options you have for that draw and discard sort of effect again there's a few different ways to be using this card there is i want to refill my hand right which is how it was initially used i empty my entire hand my opponents still have seven cards in hand so then i windfall and i get to refill my hand my opponents don't get that much of an advantage off of it it's also great in any of those looting decks where you want to be drawing and discarding and of course 
there's a lot of those out there as well. If you want discard triggers for yourself or your opponent, it's great. If you want draw triggers for yourself or for your opponents, also really great. But again, the main reason why I put it so high up on this list is because it is blue and we don't really see these effects in blue a whole lot. So that makes it very, very important in the format. Coming in at number three, exploration. And again, as I'm talking about these cards, people are like, oh wow, that was from Urza Saga. Like it's just a ridiculous set with so many really, really powerful, impactful cards. Yes, that's right. Exploration is also originally from Urza Saga. One green mana enchantment. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. I don't think there's a whole lot that needs to be said here. I mean, this just goes in any deck where you want to be playing lands all the time. And of course, there's an absolute ton of those in the format. How many landfall decks are there? How many different landfall commanders? Or even just not landfall commanders, but commanders where I want to maybe be playing an additional land every turn, right? We have the commanders now where you can play lands from your graveyard. So you want to be doing that, right? Playing more than one land per turn from your graveyard is also really handy. A lot of people will play this in a deck where they're not doing the landfall thing at all. Just first turn, I play exploration and then I can immediately make an additional land drop on my first turn is really, really good in a lot of commander decks. So even outside of all of the landfall decks, a lot of people will put this in their decks just so they can make an additional land drop on their first turn or maybe on their second turn. Again, really incredibly powerful effect. Only one mana so you can get it on turn one. Not really a lot that needs to be said here. We all know this is a really powerful card and a ubiquitous one in the commander format. Coming in at number two, Gamble. That's right. Another card where it's like, oh yeah, that came from Urza Saga. One red mana, sorcery. Search your library for a card. Put that card into your hand. Discard a card at random, then shuffle. So of course, again, I have to give this card a mention. It's a card that has been played in the format since forever. I will just say I don't play this card. I never have. I don't like the random part of it. I really like avoiding cards that do things at random because I don't know, maybe I'm a control freak or something. I like to know what's going in my graveyard. The joke about this card is search your library for a card and then chuck it into your graveyard because the card you search for often is the card that you end up discarding at random. But in a lot of decks, that can actually be a good thing, right? If you're in a red deck where you don't mind stuff going to your graveyard or maybe the card you're searching for you even want in your graveyard, not really a downside at all, right? So there is a lot of decks where you can put this card and there's no downside for you at all because if it goes into your graveyard, you're fine with that. Again, though, the really important part here and why I have this so high on the list is because it is a red tutor, right? Color really matters in the commander format. And of course, for red, this really is the only option. Red doesn't have a lot of tutoring. Gamble is the only card that will let you go get any card out of your deck if you're in a mono red deck. So it has to get a mention and it has to be really high on this list because of the importance of the color that it is in. Again, this is one of those cards that a lot of people will just put in any red deck they are making because one mana, go get any card out of your deck, of course, is absurdly busted and they're okay with the random aspect of it. But the fact that it is a mono red tutor is what makes it so important in the commander format. That's why I have it at number two on this list. And of course, number one on this list, I think everyone would agree is Gaia's Cradle, legendary land and taps to add a green for each creature you control. I'm not sure what else you would put at number one. This is one of those cards where it's not ubiquitous because of course it's really, really expensive, but the power level, the impactfulness, the fact that you really could put it in almost any green deck, I think makes it so that it has to be at number one. There's a lot of different aspects coming into how I rank these cards, and Gaia's Cradle is not a card that you're going to see in every game, but the fact that it is so powerful and so impactful, and people would like to put it in a lot more decks. If this was a $5 card, I imagine we'll be seeing this card all over the place in the Commander format, right? The fact that it's really expensive is the only reason why we don't. If they reprinted this card like 50 times, times and it was only a $5 card, you would be seeing it in literally every single commander game. I guarantee it, right? So maybe it's a good thing that they don't do that. So there's a lot of different aspects that are coming into how I rank these cards. Really at the end of the day, the ranking doesn't matter that much. I'm mostly talking about the most impactful and important cards in the commander format from Urza Saga. And of course, looking at this list, it's like, wow, what a ridiculous set this was. It certainly was a really powerful broken busted set that came out of 
very long time ago and is still having a huge impact on pretty much every format, Commander included. What do you guys think? Am I way off on my list? Would you have put Time Spiral or something like Greater Good in the top 10 rather than just an honorable mention? Maybe, I guess you could have. It's a tough one for sure. There's so many really great cards and a whole bunch that I didn't even mention that could have gotten a mention in this video as well. Let me know in the comments below what you think are the best Commander cards from Urza Saga and how maybe I got this list a little wrong. But that is it for today and thanks for tuning in. <laughs>